I think this works. Jeff, you're going to have to tell me if the volume. So the sound quality is going to be bad. Uh, make sure you can see chat. And kind of cam is still there. This one. Kind of cam. So hello, everybody. Um, Jeff, is the volume. Looking for an okay. He's in the, the other room. Um, so the mic that I had borrowed from my dad was causing a lot of interference, so the volume's going to be weird, but good. So RPG, how are you doing? It's been, oh my gosh, how long has it been? <laughs> Jeff walks right past the camera. Thanks, <laughs> like really husband. Um, oh, he's playing with volumes and stuff. It was speaking a little bit. Oh, thank you. So, we have, I technically have two webcams, as you can tell, and I decided to sacrifice the second one to be a grumpy kanji, which he might bark, and we're all going to get to hear his lovely, his lovely voices. He wants to participate in the stream, too. So, um, oh my god, 10 years. <laughs> That's definitely a long time. So let's swap, uh, put the chat in the, in the front. Sure. So currently, like, I had my older computer, which still had Windows 7. We put it together yesterday, and then I was like, ah, this, this isn't going to happen. So I had to move my machine, and I had to move a bunch of stuff, and then I had a large TV here. Oh, um, no, you downloaded Final Fantasy XIV, and now it's, oops, <laughs> Comcast is rude. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, it's kind of weird. Quiet here for us, but it's, it's okay. Uh, so I'm trying to think. So this is the first big test one. I still have a mess here. Uh, for future ones, usually what I'll do is the week before I'll say, "Hey, this is the recipe that we're gonna do," and oh, kind of okay. and the kind of can. Um, I'll say, "Hey, we're gonna do this recipe for my website." And we could cook together, and then as we're going through the steps, we'll be, you'll be able to ask me questions. I'll cook it a little slower than I probably would on my own. And at the same time, it's going to be fun if I could follow my own directions. That'll be a, a real test of mm -hmm. my, uh, my skills here. Uh, so, I'm going to give people a few minutes to make sure. K A Pro. Kitchen Apron. Kitchen. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. No, so it's just the regular artisan one. Um, I wish I had a professional one, but then I can have it in this lovely green. So I had to. It's a sacrifice you have to make. It's a sacrifice, and it's seven and a half years old at this point. So it's definitely starting to show its wear and tear because I probably use it more than the average person. <laughs> uh, but I love it. It's great. I can't go, uh, I wouldn't be able to survive without one anymore. So that's for sure. Oh, thanks, Kanji. <laughs> I guess my question for you is what do you, what do you want to get out of like the cooking, streaming? Um, cause I know today is going to be a lot of, you don't know what you're doing with this. We wanted to see how it works, how it sounds. Obviously, there's better audio stuff we could be picking up. Which we will. As long as people are interested, we'll, we'll continue to upgrade. So the big thing I want to get out of it is I want to do an interactive cooking uh, section where like, we, we cook together. So if and, and it will help me test my uh, recipes too, to make sure. I, most of them are fine, but some of my really old ones from like three years ago probably need some help. Uh, I will admit, I've learned things over the years, and it's definitely something that we could both, me and a new chat, could learn to, to do things together. And I want to make sure that I'm get, inspiring people to cook. So getting people out there and saying, oh, hey, even if it's this one recipe a week, I know that I'm going to be cooking and I have someone there to ask a question for if I'm in my kitchen and, oh, no, this isn't working. Or, oh, I wasn't able to pick up this, so is this a good replacement for this? And we could talk about, like, the possibilities of all that. 
Um, and also, education! Yeah. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> My little oven mitt. So. But. So. Typically, the other thing that I'll probably set up is I do have a Discord. Um, it's in the description below if you'd like to join the Discord. I will probably be adding a channel that is specifically cooking streams. And in there, if there's, say, with this, like this recipe today, I had to take the butter and my eggs out to get it at room temperature. So I would, in that channel, say, hey, if you're cooking with me today, make sure, like an hour before, take out your, your butter. So when we go live, we are all at the exact same spot and everything is like at an even um, section. But Pi is recording it for profanity. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say anything. Oh, this. <laughs> I love it. This this smith is so me. Um, so if we were going to be starting now, I would. So my laptop's down here, and I have to be able to, to make sure. Wayne's here. Hey, Wayne. You know. How you doing? Watch my crazy. Let me make this font bigger so I make sure I do things correctly. Okay. So, with this recipe, there's a few minor equipment things you'll need. So, one big one, because we are going to be taking these fresh raspberries, and actually, before I do anything, let me go relax then. If you, if you, need, if you need to go chill, go chill, take a walk, go walk Neptune, that would be the best thing you can do. Actually, give me one second. One second, because I'm missing my alerts. So, random mentalist, thank you for the follow. Um, also, the chat and stuff is good. Do you want the background music to be? Is it too loud? It's quiet. I can hear it. So, oh, okay. Why isn't it on? I'll take care of it. Nothing's working. There it is. Ta da! Um, right. So, one second. Uh, well, you know, I will after the stream because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be busy for a bit. So we will talk about that later. So try and calm. Um. Okay, just later. So there are certain things you're going to need to be able to make this recipe. We have the fresh raspberries. I've washed them and, and taken care of that. I have a small food processor. This is one you can pick up pretty cheap. It's a nice little like set that comes together. I have my bigger food processor, but because I'm only using this much raspberry, I don't want to make that big of a mess on my big one. You're also going to need like a big baking sheet so you can put your cookies somewhere. Um, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can use a hand mixer and some bowls. Um, you'll probably need two bowls and then you'll need a strainer to remove the seeds from the raspberries and then a spatula to make it easier. That's probably one of the more annoying parts of the recipe, but it's not too bad. And I have all my measuring things there. So, first thing we would do here is my recipe says not to preheat the oven, but I'm going to. We are going to preheat the oven to 350. Probably, can you put that window down below? Yeah. The YouTube one? So I could make sure. The other one will tell me if I get any followers or anything. So I could see that. Cool. And I can see Kanji's on the camera and he's doing his job. <laughs> Look how busy he is. I'm happy he's actually standing there. Okay, 
So there will be noises as I start like blending items. So I'm gonna take my raspberries, and puree them. Yep, as it still has a bunch of water on them. There's always gonna be mistakes. Yay, Kanye Cam's doing its job. <laughs> Let's be real. That, that's why y'all are here. It's for kanji. That's why I would be here. <laughs> Alright. So, I have my raspberries. We are going to test something. Tell me if it's too loud as I blend this, because then I'll have Jeff mute it as we do the blending. It'll probably be pretty loud. So I guess maybe... I uh, would turn off the mic. You see the bottom one? This is mic. Yeah. That little, like... Okay. Once I start. So, I put it in here. I want to blend this till it is liquefied, basically. It's completely smooth. There's going to be seeds in there, but that's fine. No need to worry about it. So, hit that new button. Don't pull. Can you actually get that? Get the nice little close up walk. So, all right, it's still, there's a lot of seeds. Um, I'm gonna blend it up a little more because it is still a little clumpy. All right, more blending. So now we have it in a Jeff is muting the mic because we don't want the loud noises. Um, there will be loud noises and we're trying to, we're trying to be pleasant to your ears. So here it is. I, this is at a state that I think it would be fine to start straining it. Where did I put my bowl? I imagine you could do the same thing, the same ratios would be used in the, the recipe, but I would defrost them because if you have them in the frozen state when you're trying to puree them, that's no good. And I think the end result would still be the same where you would want to put them through the strainer. Now oh, for the boring part. And the long one, because this takes a while. Maybe I need a better mesh strainer is the thing. So I have a very fine mesh strainer here. Um, this is a multi-purpose tool because I use it for frying and all that. We are first going to remove the blade so we don't have the blade fall as we're removing things. Oh. Let me just get out of the sink. There you go. <laughs> it's in the way. <laughs> the most... Yeah, it would have to be quiet, and I would have to have way better, uh, much better sound system for that. <laughs> and be quiet the whole time. That ain't me. So, all right, this is the part I hate the most. So, one thing I'm going to want. I'm going to put some paper towel on the side here, because as I put it into the mesh strainer, the seeds are going to build up and then eventually it's just going to be mostly seeds, so I'll just toss them to the side here. Cool. Let's see. Alright, see you later, Bueno. I'll, t I'll call you later, okay? So why, why would you pick this recipe to do out of all the recipes you have? So, one, I felt like having some cookies and a lot of my recipes since I'm only down to one camera, I didn't want to use any recipes that required the stovetop, any massive like uh, cutting specialization stuff, any of that, because I have the one camera and I figured y'all would like to see my face instead. No, that's, that's not true. You probably want to see the food. So these first few are going to be these easy, easier ones where it's a cookie recipe or even a cake recipe will get more complicated. Um, 
but it doesn't require for a camera to be in here. I could I could disconnect the 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 bowl here and bring it up to you guys pretty easily. <laughs> oh no, just separate. Yeah, this is this is my least favorite part of any seed recipe. Like technically you could just leave the seeds in but the consistency would be not nice. You would be biting into seeds, so. What kind of fancier tools would make it better? Is there like, <laughs> is there actually a way around it or is this just the life you gotta live? I think this is, I think this is the life I have to live. Maybe there is. Senpai, do you have any, uh, did you have any hacks when you were doing this? I mean, all life hacks involve cutting a water bottle and doing something with it, right? So it's gotta be a water bottle. Let's get a water drink. bottle in. Yeah. Kind of get that going. Okay. I actually probably a less fine mesh strainer would help too, because this is this one's pretty fine, and this is what I've had, and so I've gotten used to dealing with it. Um, is that the patience hack? <laughs> It is. So that gives us like a chance to talk and be like, oh my, hi raspberries, let's be friends. And this will be something that I'll have to like keep in mind when we do, if someone actually is joining me and cooking at the same time, to be like, everyone does it at a different pace. So we gotta take our time. Make sure we get as much as we can. We don't wanna waste too much juice. Actually, can you pass me a spoon? Yeah. You're standing right there. Just a spoon. Something that I've also found is if I scoop the bottom, scrape the bottom here, it helps. Time to slowly. <laughs> oh no, that jerk! For a while, Jeff would keep saying, oh, <laughs> we're gonna do some life hacks and just use a bunch of water bottles. Because that's not all those like clickbait videos are. Let's make a life hack. Cut a plastic box. Everyone has a plastic bottle. Hey. <laughs> I guess technically if you wanted to with this recipe, you could use like a raspberry jam. Now, it has sh more sugar in it than just this would, so you would want to, uh, probably reduce the amount of sugar you put into the cookies if you do that. I've also learned that it is pretty difficult to... Where's the folder to turn the camera on? Oh, go to the edit. No, okay, so up at the very, very tippy top, the little one that looks like a, a camera. If you click that and then you hit that button. So you could move it, because this is a, he, he has two spots he likes to sit. But yeah, back to the, uh, if you're using jam instead, um, I would reduce the sugar amount. I would also, would I reduce how much sugar is in there? Yeah, it, it is also difficult to find raspberry jam or jelly without the, the seeds. That's, I've had many an adventures trying to find that for, I think there's a few cakes I've done. And a lot of times it'll be like, oh no. You don't want to see them now. <laughs> so finding that is, is an option. But again, reduce the sugar that you probably would put in the recipe. Eventually, if I'm using the orange, put that in the camera, and then he's going to no, he doesn't like cameras. Anytime I take my phone out, he's like, oh, I'm good. I'm done. So now, the reason I like, you, you should be preheating your oven also, I just heard my beep in the background, is because it'll hit the temperature that think it, it thinks it is, but it won't actually be there. And it's like, oh no, wait, I need to, I, it needs to warm up a bit. So I do highly, highly recommend uh, having a thermometer in the oven that in general 
is nice because then you know if your temperature is accurate, if your oven is at the right temperature because sometimes things calibrate incorrectly and incorrect. So. so how have people's weekends been? I'm, I'm here just dealing with this. <laughs> Sorting raspberry seeds. Sorting raspberry seeds. What is the, the largest scale of like raspberry seed, seed sorting you've done? I feel like you've done a lot more than this once and it took forever. It has maybe one of the cake recipes. Mm -hmm. There might actually be a Gilgo Institute. That one might have had actual that. No, I probably would have used jam. I don't know. But there have been times, maybe if I made a bigger batch of this, Because the issue with using like jam or the maybe even raspberry juice is there's more sugar in there. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to... You want sugar in this, but you don't want extra sugar. So we do have to watch that. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I've never, I don't own a juicer. And I haven't used it. Well, that probably would help. But as long as they have a filter. I, I mean, for the most part, yeah, it would probably strain through quicker mm -hmm. because it would. That's clever. A yeah, juicer is something that I've not. I've not had a need for, so I have a hard time justifying purchasing it. But I could probably use it with. If I could find a few games that. Definitely had a lot of drinks that could utilize it. Careful what you disconnect and stuff, Jeff. Yeah. I'm not disconnecting you. No. I appreciate that Jeff is turning the camera off so y'all don't get uh, a headache as uh, the camera flies around to find the perfect kanji angle. Oh, Maria, thank you for the host. How are you today? This fine, bright, early morning of daylight savings cursedness. Uh oh, silver man in the Bucky's. Bucky's! Heck yeah, Bucky's the best road stop anywhere. <laughs> it is life. It is life here in Texas. We're doing good. Um, had some hiccups when setting up. It's early in the morning. I got up at like we were up at 7.30, but then I started setting stuff up at like 8.30. And at first I had the mic that I was using plugged in. And it was like, I'm just going to have a bunch of static noise. Actually, this is probably terrible to have next to a computer. So that was an interesting thing to do. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. No, when we drive from Houston to Austin... We make sure to at least stop once at a Bucky's. That's a, a mandatory stop. Also, Kanji appreciates it because he gets a, a rest. And he gets to stretch his legs out. I think every time we've gotten to Bucky's, someone has stopped us and been like, oh my god, your dog is so adorable. I mean, that happens on a daily basis with Kanji. So. He goes there to talk to his fans. Kanji is a popular pups. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, there aren't a lot of parties, at least in, in Houston there's not many, because we'll have kids come by and go, what's that? What happened to that dog? We actually had a kid say, what happened to his legs? <laughs> it's a corgi! Oh no! So kind of, he, for normal streaming, he, it wouldn't work, because he does move around and I would have to have like a camera set up in a very special spot. Because he likes to sit in the room between Jeff and I. For kitchens, he has two spots that he likes to sit at. This one that he's in right now, which is pretty low on. Or the other one is right up in the hallway, maybe hoping he'll get something, even though he's never gotten anything. Um, so big, big dreamer there, for sure. Yeah. Almost done with the raspberries! 
because the nose is cut off. Oh, I was turning it Oh, thank you. Yeah, Jeff, I guess, went and checked and, and noticed. So this is definitely a, a whole new, like, figuring things out. I usually don't have background music in. I'll have that the game. I have a better quality mic when I'm also streaming because I have my Blue Yeti. This is just the webcam mic. We had a, we had a cheap out real, real nicely today just to get it to work. But the main thing is we're testing. So if you guys have like any recommendations, any comments as it's going on, I'm looking for them. We're trying to improve this and get used to doing the cooking streams because this is a long-term thing. I would love to continue doing and maybe setting up. It was interesting setting the kitchen up and like the webcam right now is right next to the, the fridge. So I had to make sure I got everything out that I needed beforehand. And there's wires everywhere, but they're all above where Kanji would walk so he won't trip and take down a TV. <laughs> Let me see. Excellent. Move, move that window so I can see things. Also, hello, Leo. Welcome to the stream. Okay. I think we're <laughs> This is me getting slowly the patience winding down. <laughs> the, I, oh, I don't want to deal with this anymore. So, I'm going to give this a quick rinse because otherwise it'll stick and it won't be fun to clean later and Jeff will hate me. I'm trying to figure out. I think the weirdest thing with like cooking on stream is I'm going to be a lot cleaner than I am normally. Uh, sometimes it's a lot of controlled chaos is what I call the, uh, the cooking in here. Especially when I'm doing stuff for like the blog. So I'm like, okay, I have to set my camera up, make sure it's taking pictures the whole time and make sure things are in the right position and all that. So, um, zoom in. Thank you, Maria. Uh, so here is the, yeah, the raspberries. I don't want to lean it anymore before I lose it. So yeah, that's what we got. Now, the next step, let's see what the next step is. You have to follow my recipes. Uh, pour them through a mesh strainer, remove the seeds, and now I'm going to mix the vanilla extract. I was taking pictures of all this. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So. No punchy, you don't get vanilla extract. So I have my measuring. I need two teaspoons. If this was, wasn't like a complete test one, I would probably consider updating some of my recipes because one thing I should be doing is weighing everything. Um, just to make sure my European fr friends uh, are able to also cook because us crazy Americans are lazy and do things by cups and all that, so accuracy isn't always correct. But, so I am mixing my raspberry and my vanilla extract, and I'm pretty sure then... There we go, so then I have to move it up, mix, and set aside. It's on the side now. Now I don't have to worry about it. So the next big step is preheating in an extra bowl. I have my bowl, nice clear one so you all can see what's going on there. I am going to be mixing my dry ingredients. That's flour, uh, the dark cocoa powder, or just regular cocoa powder. I say dark, but it's 100% cocoa. Can't go wrong. Yeah, so cooking in general does, uh, sorry, cooking you can experiment with. That's great. You can do whatever you want. Baking definitely requires accuracy because you can, if you're off by some, it'll do weird things. Um, it's not as bad as some people put it out to be, but if you're doing things like the one that I keep avoiding, croissants and stuff, you want it to be accurate as all accurate can be. So, yes. Things breaking. 
music inconsistent? Yeah. I mean, just keep it on the lower side then. Yeah. If it's quiet, it's quiet. The game cinematic soundtrack has ups and downs, so. You know, especially when it's so. It goes blah, 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 and other times it's just kind of a somber. Somber. If I had planned a little better, I would have done better with music. Um, so yeah, we are listening to the Guild Wars 2 soundtrack. I figured it was on theme. So I do have a souffle recipe. I have two, I think. Souffle would be interesting. Um, there is a bit of timing stuff with that that I would have to go, oh no, be accurate. Could be fun. And then it all fails and, and it drops. For sure. That means it's educational. It's educational because I fail, we all fail together, it'd be great. Some people would succeed. Yeah, it's true. So, I'm gonna make sure so I'm not missing it. So I need three cups of this. So one thing I make sure to do when I say three cups, I mean three leveled cups. Not no bump, no under, just exactly three. I'm gonna put everything in. Sorry, that is probably very loud on your ears. I should be careful with that. And three down. <laughs> I'm going to put this back here. So I needed that. I need my uh, dark chocolate powder. Oh, I need a half cup of this guy. Kanji keeps watching you as you like reach for things and move things. You're like, ooh, what's that? Yeah, he's a big old corgi. He's a big old corgi. Long boy. And he's hoping for things too. This is always the saddest. This is like. This doesn't quite fit. Which is also unlike my normal cooking. It is usually just find things as I go through the recipe and grab them. So I know in the recipe it recommends dark chocolate. I am always a dark chocolate person. Um, you don't want, I guess dark chocolate's not the right word. You want unsweetened cocoa powder. Um, if you don't want it to be a super dark cookie, just reduce how much uh, cocoa powder you're putting in and add a little more flour in replacement of that. So you can still have the correct ratio of dry and and your wet ingredients and all that. I don't know if that's accurate. Kind of a big dog. So I think on average, Corgi's are 25 pounds. Male corgis are 25 pounds. Kanji's thin and he's 35 pounds, but that's because he's a longer, a slightly bigger. Yeah. Stoutier boy. He's just a large lad. Yeah, I'm talking about you. The largest lion. I'm gonna try and make sure that I'm getting a level amount as it just like spills in. I didn't. It should be accurate, but not like it's a four cup, it's a half cup, right? Yeah, good. I'm going to be as close to accurate to the... See, it would be easier if I had written the weight, I would just have to pour it in, you know. So am I going to do it right now? No. I'm going to be awful at that. That is probably the part I had the hardest time convincing myself to do. I'm trying to get better. My more recent recipes, I try to make sure. I mean, it's sitting right here. My, my measuring thing's sitting right here. What is, what is your favorite thing to get at Bucky's? My favorite thing? I like the jerky. I mean, that's what we usually get, right? Yeah. I don't have a Bucky's t shirt anymore. Because all of mine are bad. They had a good one. I had a picture of an armadillo on it. Yeah. Um, I really like their jerky. Like Jeff and I will get, actually, 
Jeff's first experience with jerky was from Bucky's. Before that, you had never really had. Well, yeah. besides like Slim Jims, but I that never was, had. I never that was had no, you never had them. No. no. Your childhood is very uh, <laughs> different. Nothing. Is nothing. You had no childhood. My childhood was a bit blank. <laughs> Um, it was me sitting in a void until I was about 18. Oh, what were those things called from, they're the beaver nuggets? The little sugary corn things. <laughs> those things are like, after a while I feel bad eating them, but you don't really, you just keep eating them. You just keep going, no, no. And you're like, oh no, I made a huge mistake. I don't think we've gotten the barbecue sandwiches from Bucky's. I don't know if we've gotten any of the... I mean, the sandwich stuff always looks really good because they make it there. It's not like just a bunch of stuff, usually. And and honestly, like, they're... They are really good to their employees and they take care of them. They actually pay them higher than minimum wage, which is why I'm like, heck yeah, I'm going to support this company. So, let me see. Alright, Semper, I see your question right now. I can, I can do this right now. Um, yes, because you could buy a kitchen scale. Like, you can buy a pretty cheap kitchen scale. I Under $20? Probably under $30 um, pretty easily. And I do think it's a, a good thing. That one, so the only issue I have with that one is it doesn't, this is, it doesn't have ounce. No, it doesn't do ounces. So this one does ounces and grams, which is nice. So if, if either anything that you're reading has that specific measurement, I think that one's under $30, this one. Um, that one I like a little more because it'll do to the point center, like the decimal spot. This one takes a second sometimes. So yeah, like the range of prices that you could buy are, are there. I've had that one for Five years now, and I, I think it's a good. Oh, the breakfast. What could you talk about? So my <laughs> items are either in green usually, or I'll have things in nice bright pink. Actually, one of the things I got this past holiday is my thermopen, and this one is in pink. This is a real nice like meat thermometer or just a thermometer in general. But yes, you will see lots of green and pink <laughs> in this. Yeah, it's, it's a good, and it'll let you do any recipes that are um, designed for, I guess, European audience more than anything, and your your higher pro and like kitchen influencers, like chefs. There you go. That's the word. <laughs> it's about it's about influencing the food. Influencing food. No, yeah. so they'll use so like Alton Brown will use weight stuff because it's more accurate. You're gonna get an exact thing. Sometimes these cup things aren't accurate enough. I've gotten away with it, but it's a nice investment that it wouldn't be my top thing to recommend in the kitchen, but it would be something if you're like, hey, I'm looking to upgrade something, I'd probably say that. Sometimes as he thought all the kitchen scales were just those pulley systems in grocery stores when you put something on and it weighs down. That's pretty sweet. That, that's better than what we have. I wish I had something like that. <laughs> Oh my god, I would die for a pink KitchenAid mixer. Mmm. <laughs> Gotta break that one faster. No, I do think if I, if this one does go on me, because, well, we'll be there, I'm not going to hurt I probably would get the professional one. I put flour and cocoa powder in it. So, any, any baking powder? this real quick and then I will recap again so I make sure I don't forget anything. I need the salt and the cardamom. Which cardamom is great, great. I have not, so gumbo is one thing I've not cooked because I eat whatever. Uh, it keeps a bit kosher on things so that would be a recipe I would be eating by myself and maybe you want to keep people over and make some gumbo and be like, hey, I have a bunch of Like this last weekend, I did a recipe that traditionally has bacon in it. And I was like, I don't want to be eating this like for a whole week by myself. So I switched it out for um, 
for duck fat, which it, I think it did a really nice thing with it, and I was happy. That recipe will be coming up eventually. Oh my gosh, I was so like, whoa, it was Friday night. It's like, Jeff, I have to find duck fat. We have to just find some duck. You could open it. It's on the other side of the fridge anyway, so you're fine. Uh, okay. Adding a teaspoon of cardamom, which is has become one of my favorite spices. I just love the flavor it adds to like even savory dishes. Really nice. Yeah, see? Duck fat. Oh, thank you so much for the bits! Yay! Becky, this is for you! Hey, what for you is your name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh no, we had a crisis. Kanji cam, I knocked it over. <laughs> Kanji's looking at Kanji. the camera and I'm looking at the camera. Ooh. Big stretches. What's the Something flew over head. Uh, okay. And a teaspoon of salt. So I have all of my dry ingredients in this bowl. So something that I am gonna to wanna to do is I plug them all, is mix it together. I like to just take my whisk attachment here and just kind of mix it in. I just realized I put the whisk attachment in something I want. I guess we'll see you now. Making more of a mess. What? <laughs> I put the kaji cam on the ground and kind of sniffed it in there. Maria, thank you for this song! Heck uh, yeah. Oh, is he sniffing the camera? He was like, what's this on the ground? I'm improvising. Thank you so much! Heck yeah! Let's see. What brand of uh, a beef hat? What brand of beef hat do you use? That is an option. The thing is, I do... I guess once I get better, another camera where... plan is a camera up here, a camera over here, so we can get things. It'll probably make my life easier with sometimes... Because my tripod that's there right now... Jeff, <laughs> I'm sitting here like moving it, moving it, and adjusting, and getting a step ladder to make sure things all fit. So it would be nice that maybe this will be able to help like make that a little easier. Hi, it's Derby Gaming. How are you? I'm oh, sick. Maybe the pad you can't walk. Maybe Kanji's kind of, hmm? Maybe they on Kanji. <laughs> Jeez. It's showing his flute. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe Kanji will bring a little joy in your life right now. Okay. So, I have all of my dry ingredients, most of them mixed. I'm going to set that aside now, too. So now we're going to start playing with the, the stand mixer. So I don't want to use the whisk attachment because cookies tend to be a thicker dough and it will get stuck. You can, um, I'm going to be nice to myself and use the thick dough attachment. So, attached, so I've made more of a mess with Jeff. And attached. So, the first thing, I'm just assuming here, not even looking at my recipe, bad news. In another bowl, place the butter. So my butter here is nice and extra soft. Oh, he's figured it out. Hey, jerk. 
Imagine. Except the camera. You have one job. One job, Candy. Anyway, I take my brother out my butter out of my fridge. What time is it now? Uh, I can see it over there. It's in behind me. It's everywhere. It's kind of everywhere. <laughs> Probably two hours ago. So now it's like extra soft. And when you're working with baked recipes, if someone says use room temperature, use room temperature. Otherwise, it's not going to mix correctly. It's not going to it's just gonna be rough. And it's not gonna melt correct, right, melt. It's not gonna adhere to the sugar correctly. It's gonna be a longer process and it's not gonna be fun. Now, if your house does run warm, keep that in mind, because you don't want your butter melting on you. It's gonna be loud. So it's gonna be loud. We are going to mute the mic as I start mixing this. So. We're back to unmute it. The big thing is I don't know how loud things get, so I don't want to hurt your ears, especially with this mic quality. <laughs> A favorite restaurant in Houston. Hi, I need some. Um, I have a few. Wait a minute, are you in Houston? <laughs> I just realized this. Oh my! Okay, I'll have to be talking to you later <laughs> about that. So my... Okay, I have a few favorites. It depends on the type of cuisine that I'm eating. Um, if I feel like being real fancy... No, not real fancy. Decently fancy. I really like Hugo's. That is like one of the best Mexican places. It's not Tex-Mex, it's Mexican. Um, so that's always really There's nice. Sunday brunches in Mexico. Oh, they have a Sunday brunch. Now it is a little pricey. It's $30 for the Sunday brunch, but it's an all-you-can-eat situation. And the food is ridiculous. It's a real nice buffet set up and it's very good. Um, we went, actually Friday night, we went to a place called on Korean barbecue, and that was very good. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, on Korean barbecue is really good. I like Tiger's Den a lot for their ramen. I haven't been in a bit. The ramen shop, not the martial artist studio. Yes, ti Tiger Den. Not ti if I say Tiger's Den, that's the martial artist. <laughs> a little bit different. Um, no, there's... There so one of my favorite things about Houston is how diverse culturally it is. Um, there's a lot of different food styles and like the food scene keeps building up and it's it, it makes me so happy. Like the only issue with Houston is how big Houston is and how it takes 45 minutes to get anywhere but that's a different different issue. So I should show you. I've mixed my butter. Oh god yeah the traffic is a nightmare in itself. Okay, so here's my butter. I've scraped down the sides so it fits in. So I, I make sure everything's there. Yeah. Heck yeah, everyone needs to pet the country. It's a good boy. Alright, so I have that there. He's a, he's loafing. And that's and one of my nice things is he's like, oh wait, both of you are in the kitchen? I'm gonna sit here and watch and see what happens. Okay. Also, Odie's Chan, thank you for the follow. And Derby Gaming, keep missing things. Because right now, I think I'm gonna have to try and figure out a way to get like a monitor here. Oh yeah, that's all. I got excited. <laughs> Jeff missed my excitement. Um, have a monitor here so I don't have to go, what's happening over here now? Mm, excellent. So it's a it's a learning process right now, so you don't get excited about 
face. Um, do breast. Put my butter in. Let me get my sugar. So I have both white and brown sugar. Um, you probably, if you wanted to, you could go just with the white sugar itself. I like the brown sugar because it kind of gives a little bit of a molasses -y flavor to things. So it's a nice little extra boost of flavor there. Um, let's see. Who is Kanji? Kanji is that pup right there. A big old loaf that we keep seeing in the corner. I would add the banana to scale, but he would try to eat it. <laughs> no, he's going to try to eat it. <laughs> banana for scale. Banana for scale. <laughs> I was like, wait, what is it? Sorry, Kanji. What do I need? How much do I need? Three fourths cup of regular sugar and a half cup of brown. So, if you were to use a jam, I would probably reduce the amount of the sugar in here. That's probably where I would do the cutting. If you wanted to be a little lazy, oh, I don't know what the ratio would be that you would want to use that. So, do 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 do. Big old clumps of everything. So three, four. I don't want to dump my tea. Put that back there. I have not. I am. If I substitute sugar, it's going to be with honey. Um, I haven't really used. My mindset right now is, if I'm going to use sugar, I'm going to use it. Now, future me might regret that, but that's why I try to reduce how much sugar I'm eating. And if I am eating sugar, I have to make it to to have it. So it cuts down my sugar intake a little bit. Um, but I have not, so I would not be able to give good suggestions and, and let you know what it does. You probably could get away with the agave instead of honey. That's another ingredient that I've not used. Yeah, Kanji's ears are giant. This morning, actually, we were uh, walking Kanji, and there was a, a huge, there's a huge Akita in the neighborhood, and real cute. But the two of them were like sitting there looking, the owner's like, oh man, I think Kanji actually gives uh, gives him a run for like the biggest ears. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's pretty big. Big ears. And Kanji typically has that judging face. He's always uh, judging us. Never, never happy. He's only happy when there's food. But I should, um, I should definitely take a look at, at some, uh, sugar substitutes and things that people do suggest using. So, we are going to, yeah. please hit that sound button so we don't hurt people's ears. So, I want to scrape down to make sure everything gets mixed in correctly. I'm going to mix one more time before I go to the next step. My, my lovely butter and sugar mixture. So good. So tasty. Okay. 
Deb, are you referring to yourself in? Because you typed it. I typed. Isn't that crazy? Guy. I'm like mentally typing things. You could play the role of the bot, I guess. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> no, I love my green mixer. Makes me, it makes me happy. Ties the everything together. All right. Okay, we'll move things. I haven't scraped down yet. Here it is again. Now here it is with the uh, whoop, whoop, the butter and the sugar mixed together. So it's all nicely incorporated. The next step that I have written in my recipe says to add one egg at a time. So the reason you want to do the one egg at a time is to make sure it mixes well. Because if you add too many at once, it could overwhelm things and then it won't mix correctly. It's also nice to have it at room temperature. And another note with it is I have just butter everywhere. I do recommend as you crack eggs to do it in a bowl, a separate bowl, just to make sure as you're cracking and putting it in that you don't put any shells in or some issue with the egg that you have. Um, cool. I'm going to just crack away. Put it in. Okay, right. look at my egg. Oh, this is a good egg. There's no shells, no nothing. I'm gonna put it in. Make that pop sound. And then we're gonna mute the mic again. fortunate enough that, yeah, I haven't had that happen. I do not want uh, an overly developed egg. That would be a sad situation. Kind of just flop right over. Good. That, kind of, that's the content people want right there. Okay, I'm going to plop that other egg in and we're good. I'm going to mute away. to scrape down the sides once again. So here it is after I have added the two eggs in. You can see we're getting much more liquidy with it. So that'll allow for the everything else to get mixed in. Our dry ingredients. Alright. Egg at a time. And then I say to add, I guess we're just adding all of these. Pardon me, here's that in huh? Okay. If that's what I said. Hey. We have a grumpus now. Anytime he hears anything, it could be someone walking. He thinks, oh no. It's okay, Kanji. It's okay. Placed my raspberry in my butter, egg, and sugar mixture. Hey, he kind of defends that house and he lets people know there is a dog in here. So let's mute real quick. good at this point it's pretty liquidy so it will start falling apart so i'm not gonna i'm gonna scrape down and the next step is to start adding the flour mixture okay, just gonna put it there again. 
So I'm not going to pour everything in because that'll make for a mess. <laughs> so we're going to slowly add probably about half of it. So I have about half of it in there. And then I'm going to slowly mix. So something that is that I would recommend doing when you start mixing it in a stand mixer is to kind of pulse it a little bit. So it gives it a moment of like slight movement instead of a rush where then all the flour pops up on you. So I'm going to meet again. I got this kitchen view. Thank you so much for the flour. So I have half my mixture in right now, half the flour mixture in. Um, it's kind of streaky looking. You can kind of see it with that if I that quickly do that. Yeah, yeah, good enough. <laughs> like, That's pretty close. Close enough. Now we are going to add, I'm going to do half of what was in there. Mix again. You can see we're starting to get nice and thick here. I'm going to add the remainder of that. Okay, and we're going to be one That was me in the moment of going, oh, I just told people to kind of like pulse the, the thing and I didn't do what I told myself. So I'm going to probably have to mix one more, one more time after I scrape everything down. Actually, since I'm using this, too much. I think the last big step with like the mixing process, slowly mixing the flour until it just comes together, which it has. It says to fold them in. I'm sometimes lazy. Here, so everyone can see the, it just kind of came together. So it's there at a point. Um, See, fold in but sometimes I just take my chocolate chips and slap them up into there. It'll be fine. And of course, with any of these recipes that are heavy in chocolate, uh, Crunchy gets none of them. What? <laughs> I just like how you're like, cut bag and dump the tire bag in. I mean, the recipe calls for 10 ounces and this has 11 ounces, so you know how much I'm following <laughs> my own recipe. Um, when you put the chocolate chips, you just go all the way. I go all the way. I've actually been told by a, a co-worker that I put too much chocolate in things sometimes. And I was like, yeah, that time I put too much. Because I just kind of put too packed. And I'm like, oopsie. All right, so we're going to mute one more time. Yeah, so just like a quick, a quick kind of fold in so it kind of puts everything in there. And now I'm going to kind of get everything up and then this is where I go man I hope I didn't forget anything so usually when I'm cooking I'm silently sitting in here making sure I'm taking notes of what I'm doing so watching like the chat and making sure everything looks good getting being extra chocolatey with that nice little extra bit of raspberry in there. Now, Renee's here. <gasps> Renee? Hello, Renee. 
I'm real bad at like, oh no, there's raw eggs in here. I shouldn't be trying it. It's cookie dough. It hasn't killed me yet. <laughs> I guess I should put the warning up. Consuming raw eggs or anything can cause sickness. Eat at your own risk. Don't do it unless it's going to taste real good. Don't do it. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. Unless it tastes good. Unless it tastes good. I've not had wood. I've been lucky. I haven't had. I have been food sick. But I haven't gotten sick from, from eggs. So I'm actually going to push. Unplug this and get this out of my way for right now. So we're going to have to bring in the big baking sheet. So one thing I wish I owned is something I keep forgetting to own. The ball clay was a bit loud. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> That's the best Sorry, everybody. These are the points that we have to make sure we know. Um, if you want your cookies all to be the accurate same exact size, something that would be nice is a ice cream scoop that is set to be that like one tablespoon size. And you could like release it and put it out nicely. I don't own that. I don't think most people would. So it's a lot of eyeball it so it looks like a tablespoon. I don't think I showed the... Didn't, didn't, didn't. There we go. So there's the dough um, with the chocolate chips, with everything in there, all mixed together. But hey, good point. Watching out for us. We got the, the nice little towels here so that we're not making clingy sounds. It is very nice. Uh, I'm going to put another towel down so I'm not. Because I'm going to grab my baking sheet. Which I have a giant baking sheet. Which I typically. This is my thing I use for. Yeah, I bought this one specifically because of the, the way I do my turkey. Um, and I could. It's big enough to fit it. But it also allows me to put a lot more cookies in one spot and let them bake. All together. Okay, let's see. I am going to put parchment paper on my baking sheet. I like what part of parchment paper does. It's kind of a nice little interesting thing. I also do typically, I'm going to make sure this is in one of those recipes. Uh, this baking sheet. Right. There are a few recipes I have done with cookies that you don't want to put uh, spray down because if you do, it'll end up spreading a bit more than you want it to. And this is also a cookie that it doesn't matter if, as long as it looks like a cookie, it looks like a cookie, so that's always good. Turkey, explain method later. Honestly, the best way to make a uh, turkey is just go onto the website Serious Eats. Uh, it's a spatchcock turkey, and it's always a fun word to say. Um, it, I've made it the last three years for Thanksgiving, but it is amazing. It is the only way I will ever make a turkey, and it, it's delicious. I highly recommend checking it out and doing that. Right, yeah. So I need a chip to rip that back right out. That is the right way to do it. So I have everything nicely mixed in. I'm going to take about a tablespoon. 
about between a tablespoon and two tablespoons per cookie. No, not. I'm going to spray non-stick spray down first. Don't want my cookie sticking. So going to put it up. Yep. And I'm going for the most uniform of cookies. We're going for cookies. There are a few recipes I do have on my site for cookies where you'll have to roll them up and, and, and make them real, real nice. I mean, if you want it to look a little more uniform, you could definitely do that way, how much you're putting on per cookie, um, and then make sure it's moving on me. And do all that. Oh, Kanji, please no pork. Are you trying to give your tips for cookies? Kanji. Oh, this one has a little, it's a little less than the other one. I think. Again, if we were being accurate, we would uh, be weighing everything or have a nice ice cream scoop. Yeah, hopefully Kanji's Big borks aren't like ear piercing. Oh, so for I see the the question about the uh, I do a dry brine on mine. Um, so three days beforehand, I I put salt, baking soda, and I rub it, and then I let it sit there and dry brine away. So the skin ends up being so crispy. I love it. Oh, Jeff's on the phone right now, so you might, I don't know if we pick it up. Dry the skin. Good, good. I'm sure everyone also is fine. Like, Kanji will be borking. That's just kind of a thing he does so he doesn't doesn't stop it's something we've tried teaching out of him but honestly it's fine it lets people know hey there's a dog and some of the best things are when like a UPS guy comes by and he rings the doorbell a lot of times they'll be standing a few feet back when we open the door because they think it's a bigger dog because he has he has the bark of like a German Shepherd, so you wouldn't think it's a, a little corgi. That deep barrel chest that he has. Okay. This is a slow and messier method. Putting some cookies down. Time is is a very nice. Um, this is like hiding. I mean, truffle salt. Oh, you went fancy. I love duck. That is something I did not have growing up at all. Now, being an adult, it's like, oh my god, this is so delicious. I know with doing the, the Fallout cookbook, it definitely was like, oh, I'm buying more duck thing. Let's do this. Let's have some more fun, fun things. So my website has definitely also convinced me to do exploring with different meats and all that. So that's always fun. I mean, the, the saddest one was trying to find venison for the Fallout cookbook. And going to butchers and being like, hey, do y'all sell venison? They're like, no, we don't. Uh, you have to go hunt it yourself and get it. And I'm like, no, good, good. Don't want to do that. That's another row here. I think, yeah. Are you going to need another try? Most likely, but we'll do one at a time. So then there's like 
these do have to go into the oven and bake for about 14 minutes. Maybe 14 minutes of us uh, chitty chattering about random, if you guys have random food questions or like want to know any equipment that I have in my kitchen that I use or things that I. I want to see if can't you do some tricks. Yeah, can't you do some tricks while we wait? Um, but definitely could. I know Renee wants kitchen suggestions because he asked me and I keep not giving him a list of things. I'm a bad friend. Dee 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 dee. No word. I am excited because I've not had these since I did the recipe. I guess it's one of the more challenging things with having a blog. I have to make a few recipes to like keep up with that and then I won't make older things. Obviously the savory one is a lot easier. <laughs> Hey Brandon, how you doing? Alright, so I know in here I say to press each down into like a cookie shape. Something I'm just kind of give them a quick little a little pat down. Uh RPG asked what's the craziest thing besides the mixer reality in the kitchen. Let me think. We have some we have some very specialized things that I think most people wouldn't own. So, let me finish these cookies and then I can start like rummaging through my kitchen. And Dolphy wants to know if you're going to record these and put them on YouTube or somewhere else. I think that would probably be a good idea. I have to look into how to do that. Um, I could set up a YouTube channel that's just, I guess, related to that. Wouldn't probably save the game once, but these would be, I think, relevant to my life. So, I have all my cookies. They're <laughs> sliding right off. <laughs> uh, they're still on, it's okay. So here are my cookies and they're safe. Um, I patted them down a little bit. They're mostly the same size. So, I am going to place into my... Oh, actually Brandon, that is a good one. Brandon knows. All right, so I'm gonna pop these in. I'm gonna put my timer on. 15. 15 minutes. So, I think Brandon. That's my cookies. The thing Brandon is my train. Is this mold set? But I'm gonna make it up. So, actually, there's one piece I could show with it. I saw the 3D print. Jeff Top. Sure. Um, this mold set uh, was actually an experiment that I did uh, because we wanted to see if it was possible to make the gummy hog spray from Overwatch. So I made a 3D model. I don't know if it's, it's mostly showing up. I made a 3D model of the gummy hog spray and then we went through a website to get it 3D printed. This is from Overwatch. Yeah, from Overwatch. And then I, um, I can get a little closer with this. Yeah. I uh, took some Legos and a silicone mold set and made a bunch of copies of the gummy hog so that uh, you can kind of fill these up with gelatin and have them set and then get out the gummy hogs as they go. Uh, it was a lot of work. This was kind of fun to make, but all this effort makes four large gummy bears, and I don't really know if uh, it's economical to make a giant recipe. So we before. did, we, I, I did try making like a recipe for, for gummy bears. I ended up also buying, like, I have regular gummy bears in here, too, like a, another mold that's just regular gummy bears, and I felt weird about being like, oh, these are gummy hogs. Also, you can't really do it because you have to make this mold yourself. Um, or we would have to find a way to start like mass producing these, but the amount of work to like actually have this made, there he is, thank you, uh, was so much that I just included it in like my end of year wrap up because we did it last year, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. last year. Uh, and we were like, ah, this, this was a lot of work, but it was cool. A thing I did learn, <laughs> I made a, the gummy bear recipe. And I put them 
in the fridge because it was like a juice mixture and the fridge started dehydrating them <laughs> because I left them uncovered and they probably shouldn't have been in there. Uh, I think two days later, each of the gummy bears were like half the size and real dry. It was really funny. And I was like, oh no. So that's one of the weirder things we own. One of the more, I mean, I have a, I have a pasta maker attachment for my, my thing, my, my KitchenAid mixer. I have, I have a Taiyaki pan. Uh, what about a giant cabinet of one or two copies of unique plates? So because I have my food blog, one of the things I am in a constant search for is plates. And over the years, I have collected so many plates. I had to buy a, uh, a separate cabinet because uh, these were starting to fill up. Can I do this in here? So the, the shelving is not the best in here. So things were starting to stack up and the plates were all kind of different sizes. We had some plates that were like this big, some plates that are like this big. Um, but then I eventually finally, after being here for a bit, uh, we purchased a, a big cabinet that has a lot of one-off plates, two-off plates. Are you looking for the Final Fantasy one? Is it here? Or? It's in the bottom. Okay. I have a plate hoarder, but they all get used. I mean, with my website now has over 300 recipes. Um, so I wouldn't want that. Like I, there are repeat plates that come up, but I have to keep it. I have to keep it. Uh, not that. Oh, the tie -up. So it's definitely been a, oops, careful, a, a, a hobby of passion here. Just enjoying it and taking pictures and yeah, that that is probably the more specialized. Like I bought a tie pan because I had to make that because the video game had it. It's locked. I figured it out. You did it. You're so smart. And those aren't too bad to make. Like, sort of bang your hand. Um, I do have, because Jeff was nice, he did buy me a, what was the camping company? I can find it at this one, Coleman. The Coleman plate that you find, that is in Final Fantasy 15, uh, that they use, which is funny because the year the game came out, they stopped running this line of plates specifically, and they started running a, a blue one instead, so Jeff managed to find one plate, so on a, a few of my Final Fantasy 15 recipes. Off Japanese Amazon. Off Japanese Amazon, yeah, like, it is, it is just a thing, it is one of the weirder, well, no, weird, the weirdest thing is coming. Like a $12 plate. It's a $12 plate, but it's been used a few times. I've done a, a, several recipes from 15, because that game's food is ridiculous. Actually, most Final Fantasy games, I mean, 14 and 15 do a good job with that. Um, what else do we have? There's just a lot of stuff. A bunch of coffee things. And a lot of coffee things. Oh, you know what we could do right now? Since we're just waiting. What's up? We could give a live uh, demonstration of the chips we bought. I mean, we've tried them already. So, one of the things we like doing whenever Lay's has their like unique chips flavors, we buy them. So Brandon, get ready for it. That's gonna be these are gonna be at work. They had a nice little series of uh, I think I guess they're music related. They're called Turn Up the Flavor. Experience flavor and music in perfect harmony. So they had three different flavors, which we got lucky, the HEBs here were carrying all of them. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> so they're at HEB. They were at the one by us, at least. Mm -hmm. down a little bit. Mm -hmm. there. So good. So this one is the beer and cheese, and it is the inspired by classic rock music. And then this one is the flaming hot dill pickle, pickle remix, hip hop music. And then the last one is the lime and sea salt, inspired by pop music. I like the packaging a lot. Like I think that's one of the big highlights with these. 
So, I know we had these already. You can probably tell based on how like the bags are filled, which, which one we nice. liked. Um, so I, I'm gonna go from, I think, I don't know which one I like less. <laughs> so, the big, this one? All right. So, this is the flaming hot blue, blue, blue one. Let's see the Our cookies are baking, so this is why we're doing this. So, Lay's has done the dill, I think last year they had the dill pickle, oh, the fried dill pickle ones. Yeah. I think those are the worst ones. So they, when they do dill pickle stuff, they like to really lean in on the dill flavor, which for me, dill is kind of a, a flavor that can be, come here, come in, you know, group activity. I was about to make Kanji stop barking so much. He's fine. So when I eat this, what I get right away is, you first get the flavor of dill, and then you get hit with spice like right back here. Like it's like an instant. It doesn't have the taste of like a flaming hot Cheeto. Ooh, fancy. Um, but I think if you like the if you like a spicy chip and the like the flavor of a flaming hot Cheeto minus the cheesy part and dill. You would probably really like these. They're they're better than the dill pickles. They're much better. Because there's more flavor to it. Yeah. It's not just like a thin pickle. No, it's not even like the the dill pickle ones that I had the issue with was it wasn't pickle. It was just dill. So, so if you like spicy pickles. This would be one that I you would you should check out. We tried the chicken and waffle chips, right? Yes, we did. We did. Like I said, we have a weird obsession with trying flavored chips. So anytime they run these, we we make sure to grab them. I mean, last year they had the like the regional ones, where here we had the queso flavored one in that we were, I was able to find. I was able to find that one, the truffle, and one other one. I was like, oh man, I can't get all these other ones. Uh, Jeff kind of like was secretly like looking on Amazon to see if they would have the refill of like a sampler back, and then he eventually did get that one. So this one is the lime and sea salt, and it is the wavy variety of chips. Um, so my issue with this one, I want, okay, so this was probably out of the three when I first saw them, I was like, oh, they can't screw this one up. This one's going to be real good. Um, the closest thing to flavor to is like um, a lime lollipop. Right, it's so artificial tasting, mm -hmm. and I think it deters the flavor away. Like, actually, you know what might help this? Guacamole. You just have some guac, and then you eat that with this. That would definitely help it. But I think of so I'm not a big spicy person. I think if I was, I would like the the flaming hot dill ones a little more. Cause this one's very artificially. I do miss the, the chicken and one, uh, the chicken and waffle one that they had. Hmm. Yeah, right, because Maria, you asked about food places. Somewhere you have to go is the Breakfast Club. They have chicken and waffles there. Mm, mm, real good breakfast place. Like it's it's one of my one of my favorites. Alright. So this one's a beer. Beer and cheese. Like, that one's just good. It's a good chip. Like if I saw this in a store, I would consider buying it. Um, these other ones, I wouldn't. So this one won't be at work, Brandon. <laughs> so, 
but it is really tasty. Like, it doesn't taste much like beer. It has more of a like a mild cheese flavor. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of bitterness that kind of reminds me of the beer, mm -hmm. probably what they were going for. Mm. Like the cheese you get for pretzels? Yeah. Oh. We're at. We got two minutes left on the Yeah. The cookies, hopefully. Okay. Um, one sad thing about my oven is the light in it has broken several times. Uh, we've replaced it and it broke within two weeks of replacing it. So now I sit there not without a uh, any light in my my stove. So we will not have any like camera view watching things expand and grow as it goes. It's about oven confidence. <laughs> really hoping that that will make souffles difficult. I haven't done a souffle in yeah. I don't think I've done it's one in the house. I think I only did it when we lived in the apartment, so it's been at least four years. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm old on the on that. Did you make savory souffles or? So I've done souffles? I've done the cheese souffles, which were from. I room, I believe, and I also did the, uh, I did some chocolate souffles from The Sins. Let's see. Unfortunately, we don't have maintenance here. Uh, we have to fix it ourselves. Yeah, we're in a house now, so it's one of those have to do it. I mean, if, if I mean, get a repairman. Yeah. Come on. I think, so this, this is like the set that came with the house. Uh, like the stove top's real nice. The oven has some flaws. A strong flashlight. Oh, a strong flashlight just like glared in. I guess for maybe the souffles, I've tried that. Um, I can't be hit or miss. So, one of the flaws with this is that all the electronics are up here. So there have been times that my temperature was high enough and things were steaming that when I, when I opened it, the steam has gone into it and has tripped the uh, electrical work. It actually happened this last Thanksgiving. That was a thing. Um, I don't need this. I have, I have minis. Um, where we have to go out and like hit the power breaker, turn it on, turn it off, and hope it like reconfigures. How are you liking the stream so far? I think it's going well. I think. On your end, how are you liking how it? How am I? I, I, mean, I think it's good. Baking's a weird. Mm. Let me smell that. Mute for a second because I don't want to hurt people's ears. He missed. Okay, there we go. Everybody, you know what? It's daylight savings time. We all feel kind of right now. So. I'm gonna take my cookie and I'm gonna try to care. Ooh. One of the nice things with this one, right away, you get the smell of the raspberry in them. So you can kind of tell they're not a pure chocolate cookie because they have a little bit of a red tinge to them. They're a little bit off the bottom. Oh no! This is, <clears throat> is it better to tilt the camera or I probably just, just don't make a mess. That's good. Mm, I will bring him forward once they go. So, a smarter me would have prepped another pan to start baking these other ones. So I'm gonna leave these to cool right here. I'm, not, I'm gonna move them back here. Quietly place them. <laughs> Try to make sure I don't hurt y'all's ears. Yeah, I'm gonna grab another pan actually. I'm muted. No, okay, I'm muted. For that one would have been real bad. It was pretty loud. 
That is real loud. A lot of pain in that cabinet. This is why, like, I guess one of the weirder things with like setting up this cooking stream, I was like, okay, I need to make sure I have this here, and I had to make sure everything was kind of up, so it's easy for me to grab. Everything was out of the fridge, so I didn't have to like pull wires and stuff. So it's been a. Uh... We have a cookie consistency question. So these are a much softer cookie. They're not. I would say softer, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty soft. I think the the reason that happens is the raspberry definitely softens it up. So there's a little more liquid in there than, than say, a traditional chocolate chip cookie. Okay. <laughs> the weirdest thing is just hard to be like. <laughs> Don't hurt anyone. You just put a bunch of those like, like soft stoppers for all the jars to make it. You mean improve the kitchen? Oh, what an idea. Matt. So I have a question for you. Uh, are we going to let Brandon have any of these? I'll put him out of the office and be very specifically like, no, these are not for Brandon. Put a sign out, not for Brandon. For everyone but Brandon. Now one of the joys is, I am able to uh, just throw these at work so I'm not eating a million cookies. I need to eat. 15. I'm at 19 right now. So yeah, last thing I need is two dozen cookies. I mean, last week I had a week because it was a pretty stressful week. I made myself a thing of like my comfort when I'm stressed is I make brownies and then it's I make a huge mistake and I'm just eating brownies. So when I was like, oh I'm gonna do this uh this cookie stream, I'm like I'll probably eat like one because I am already sugared up from all of that. Okay. You know, this is also going to help me like with the timing to, to figure out how long the recipe takes. One thing I'm really bad at and the Fallout cookbook kind of shows is the cooking times. I'm not good at like estimating, oh, it's going to take me this long to do it. Obviously with talking, it, it adds a bunch of time. So, we shall see. I could, I could look at this and I could start adding the cooking time to things. Ooh, exciting. That is true. I mean, when you compare how quickly you make things in the kitchen to someone who's slow in the kitchen, like you, me, uh, I was going to make fun of myself before you were doing it. Um, the extra talking and all the explanation probably is a good buffer to get a better idea. Account for things. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, very true. Or just make me do it. And then you see how a slow person makes something. If only there were more hours in the week. But I mean, the benefit of these cooking streams is I get, I get to see... I get to explain things to you and we get to, if you have questions and I can answer any of that. Um, but it also helps me do a recipe again because there are some recipes that I've, I nailed it and I'm like, whoo, this is great, perfect. And then I went back to, so. How long have you been baking and cooking? When did it let's, let's go back in time now. Uh, so, growing up, I was always interested in like cooking. There was a time in my life where I was like, oh, maybe I should go to culinary school. And then I decided against that. And that is probably because my parents in Chicago have a small cafe. And I've seen what working in the restaurant industry can do to someone. <laughs> or it's, it's, it, you stop loving food. You end up eating out all the time. And you're, you're doing it for, for your job. Um, so I decided against that and did a bit of cooking, a little bit of cooking, mostly it started with real easy stuff like, oh, I went to Costco and I picked up some freezer stuff and real simple things. Um, that is right. My parents did do that. That was real nice of them. Um, so we always, I always had like an interest in it. Like, my mom's family's from Sicily, so it was always a lot of big Italian cooking meals happening. So it was always that big, oh, here's a bunch of lasagna, here's a bunch of this. And 
I'd always help with Thanksgiving. I'd say it was when we moved down to Houston. How long is that? Almost 10 years ago. Almost 10 years. Oh God, it will be 10 years in a June. It's crazy. Um, that we, we've been down here living in our own. And one, one of the things is like, well, you want to keep eating out all the time. Like it just costs too much money. Let's start cooking. So I started doing general cooking and, and experimenting with stuff. And then as I've, uh, I think it was about two years after that, I was like, oh, I should start like a cooking blog just for fun to convince mostly my friends to come in and, uh, to get them to start cooking because I was like, oh, I've ever seen a benefit. I actually, when I stopped eating out as much, I had lost a decent amount of weight and I was like, oh no, there's, it takes time, but it's worth it. Um, I started just a regular blog where I was like, I'm just doing recipes. No connection to video game stuff. That lasted like two months. I got bored with it and was like, okay, no. I, then a year later, I was like, no, I, I want to do this again, but let me tie it to, to video games. And it was when Guild Wars 2 was coming out. Um, and Guild Wars 2 had a lot of recipes in it. And I was like, oh, I could, I could detach a lot of this and, and do all that. So I started finding recipes and games and going, well, I'm going to go and figure out how to make this and then make it my own and, and come up with like unique recipes. So I'd say seriously cooking for about seven years, like home cooking. I ain't gonna do any professional cooking. Um, and I, it's all self-taught, really. It's It's been learning and experimenting. Baking, like doing unique baking things probably took a while to get used to because there's all that. Renee, don't you love Omnum Berry Cake? Isn't it the best cake ever? Yeah, Maria, I, it's, there is a lot of stress to being a chef, and I think it's, I love cooking, and I love doing home cooking, and there's, like, I don't mind doing this, like, if I, like, obviously, I've done a cookbook, I've enjoyed that, I've enjoyed teaching people how to cook, and, and bringing, like, a bit more cooking into people's lives, but, at a restaurant, dealing with angry customers, and dealing with the you're constantly moving, you're constantly cooking, constantly cooking the same thing over and over and over again. It'll wear on you. I mean, it, it does. So. Okay, I think this is soft enough. Okay, soft enough. Cool enough. Bring my back. Thank you so much, Nick. At some point, not at some point, probably at least once a month, I'm gonna drop so much stuff on the floor. Before we fight it. Alright, yeah, because now, now I can handle these and lift them up and have no issues. Okay. Oh, I'll mess up a recipe. So here are our cookies. I'm gonna pack them in half over here. So these cookies definitely have a bit of a more like cakey structure compared to like, so we're going for that real, real, real soft cookie. Um, with the chocolate chips and the raspberries and all that fun stuff in there. My recipe works. <laughs> so, what is my best? Started at 11.30, it's 1.15. No, these are, I like this a lot because it's, you have the nice chocolate in there and then you have that nice fruity, extra fruity flavor in there that's added. <laughs> Please have a plate, Jeff, because we don't need any uh, kind of crumbs. They're very, very, very good. And 
at that exclamation point. Menu drip to see you link to the recipe. I'd say the most difficult part of this is obviously uh, not eating all of them. No, that's not the most. The most difficult part is separating the raspberries from their seeds. Um, and then once that's done, like if you if you want to bake these and you know you're going to do that, the night before, feel like go ahead and, and separate your raspberries and put it in the fridge and it'll be fine for the next day. Um, you don't have to do this all in one go like I did. It took Can I do math? A little over an hour ish. My math? I can't. Cool. Almost two hours um, to do this. And we're doing talking and we're taking our, our time. So I would say, like, the raspberries went <laughs> to 20 minutes. So it's not too bad. The recipe's there. Uh, you can make your own batch of these. I like them. They look well. They probably have, like, a, if you leave them out in room temperature, couple max a week. Um, I wouldn't put them in the fridge because no, still have a cookie. Wow, Jeff, Jeff is like, why are you gonna hide? Jeff, we're not getting done starve right now. <laughs> With all the trees. That could be interesting. The thing I would worry about. Oh, Yeah, fridge would dry out pretty quick, so that's not something you're gonna do. But they're great. You can give them to your coworkers. Everyone will be real happy. Unless their name is Brandon. Brandon's not watching anymore. You left us. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie jar. Um, but these are great. They're they're a very soft cookie. Um, you got fruit flavor. You got chocolate. Mm, mm, mm. Um, if you don't want it to be that super. It went good. Look, we actually made cookies, Hamlocks. We did it. I managed to make cookies in front of people. And Kanji actually stayed in the camera for more than two seconds. And Kanji's been there. Oh, he said his name. <laughs> um, I do not have a... Something I've been meaning to invest in is like a vacuum sealer. Just for like, general use of stuff. Because um, it, it seems pretty nice. I mean... We made our cookies. We did it. <laughs> we did the thing. Um, some things I do have planned, like with this stream, if we did something that was in the oven, say for a longer period of time, if we did a stew that needed two or three hours, we would probably go break time and then play the game that this food item came from. Um, I figured that would make it make it a fun way to to spend that downtime if you are cooking with me. We could do that if there's any other special steps with it. Mm, probably do some combos of recipes. I think I'm leaning for next weekend to do something from Don't Starve. I don't know which specific one. There's a few on my blog. Um, Jeff's gonna say chicken nuggets, but that requires a lot of work. I was gonna say chicken nuggets. You always would. I did. Um, so in my Discord, I will be making like a. Oh my gosh. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. In my Discord, which you find the link below, I will be making a specific uh, channel that is, I guess I'll call it like cook along streams, where I'll be maybe asking, hey, which recipe would you guys like to see? Um, and posting the recipe up a week in advance. Um, I'll hopefully pick something up for next week. Hey, pro the pierogies are really... Pierogies could be fun. I might do pierogies because it's been a while. Um, I'll say, hey, I'm going to do this game and then we all can pick an item and then, then make it together. Um, but yeah, I guess we're, we're done. We made it. Um, so if you have any feedback comments feel free to like reach out to me however you can on twitter on on discord and i had fun doing this and i hope you all had fun watching it and i hope 
to learn a little something. That really is me. Mm -hmm. This is me in a nutshell. Sam? Yeah. What do you uh, normally do during the week? Oh. Uh, doing this? If I'm not straight doing cooking streams, for now, cooking streams will be a Sunday only thing. Um, maybe in the future, as people are more interested in stuff, I'll do new recipes, test recipes, experiments, and stuff like that. Um, but during the week, right now, Jeff and I have been, Jeff and I and a few other friends, we've been playing games. Um, We've been playing things like Don't Starve, uh, Diablo 3, uh, da, 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 Destiny 2, Sea of Thieves. Okay, somebody is watching up for me. So those are a few games that you can catch me playing right now. Occasionally I'll do The Witcher 3 um, when everyone's too busy for me. But yeah, those are the games you can catch me up. I'm usually Tuesday through Thursday at 7 clock central as you can catch me this next if if people really enjoy this and the time is too early or there would be a better time on sunday feel free to reach out and i can make adjustments right now it is all a testing and learning and seeing what works well in the kitchen and hopefully we'll get better better audio i hope it's okay i hope it's been okay besides when i hurt your ears thank you so much this was definitely a learning experience, so it's been fun. So, you all have a wonderful rest of your own. No, not near the cookies, careful. You all have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, and I'll catch you all around. Bye. 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 What a good boy. Isn't he a good boy? <laughs>